on today's episode of Moto Cheese. The following movie is rated I. So you're thinking about putting a manufactured home down on a piece of property bought in Florida? I just saw someone walking with a measuring stick or whatever they are. Look right. What are you thinking you want? Because like on your site plan, it looks like you want it a little bit over to the one side. Normally they just kind of put the meter can just... Right oh, for the electric trailer. you mean? Yeah. I don't know if you're the one I talked to or not. I'm Randy. The only reason I'm thinking to leave is putting the main pole over there is because I want to put a garage on the other right, side. Right, right. Yeah, and we didn't want to interfere with that. Pro right. Probably also make the run shorter for you. Cost-effective wise, it would make more sense for us to come off that pole. Okay. And put, put it on this end. Right. Because of the amount of right-of-way and stuff. Here, you know, you're talking minimal right-of-way versus pretty substantial amount coming in from the other direction if that makes sense to you i get that but i mean if the pole goes here and they're putting a septic right there that, right. that was my only and then they'll probably end up putting a pole here where's your well to feed going? the the wells going in that corner over okay. there i know you need to be i think it's 80 feet away from yeah, there. yeah yeah and that's why i was wondering if, if you went off the pole that my other house is on and come diagonal if you could do it it's too i think it's it is too, too far. far yeah Oh. Huh. Actually, that service there kind of blows my mind. It seems like the transformer needs to be on this side because the sag in the line, see, from the transformer to the lift pole, we call secondary, and then it's service from the lift pole to the Right, pole. right. So that secondary seems like, I was out there looking at it, it seems to me like it's kind of low because of the weight of the wire it looks like four ought to me and it's got quite a bit of sag or droop to it however you want to phrase it you know normally they kind of just put the meter pole like right at the end of the the home i mean where would you put it if they went overhead here i guess you can go overhead here right i would probably have to drop a transformer out there just inside your property and then come over with secondary and service but and then how about as far as the trees go the right away we will take care of how do you mow it down or do you just top it's them ground to sky ground to sky so you'd make a, a path out yeah. directly in line with where our, our line will go okay that's why i say for cost effective reasons it would make more sense for us to come in on that side right with the right away cost and stuff yeah because we sub our right away out so okay it's not something we do ourselves uh the road's still real soft so. oh man it's bad Good thing you're no a Jeep rain. guy. Yeah. It's funny, I was when I was walking over there to kind of look at that service, I used to have an AEV Jeep. I had a JK350. Oh, wow. So it was a 2015 anvil colored. So yeah. It was that bluish gray. Yeah. So. Nice. I've, I've had a few Jeeps and stuff. I've yeah. Been kind of a no more? Four-wheel drive guy. No, I got a big Super Duty now. Oh, uh, well, still four-wheel <laughs> drive. Still four-wheel drive. You know anybody looking for a nice winch, do you? I got a brand new... Uh, Xeon 10S in the box. Oh yeah. Never been mounted. Nothing. Huh. 1100 bucks. All right. Yeah. If I hear of anybody. I mean. Yeah. Those are. Those are. hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You know. They're expensive. So it's got the synthetic rope. Like I said, never been mounted. The ropes off the thing. Everything's still in its original packaging. What's I was going to say if you went off of that pole, but then. It's 95 feet from that transformer to the to the lift pole. Right. I didn't get the service measurement, but from across the street to the lift hole is 95 feet. But you're considerably this side of the property. Yeah. So I can't add another lift pole coming over Off here. Off of a lift pole? Right. Oh, all right. I mean, I might be able to actually change the whole deal and maybe run that service off of this same transformer, if that makes sense. Just slack span over put a new transformer on this side of the road and then run the two services off of it and then you'd cut through yeah a straight, oh, okay. a straight line cut through towards the wherever the meter can gets mounted. how wide do you go normally for secondary and service it's not as wide as primary primary out on the road is 30 feet wide all right what would secondary be 15 all right the only reason i kind of left this is in, in just a little bit of privacy until I get something, you know, I'm going to clear a little by little around. Right. 
I mean, if you put it over there. The only cost prohibitive part to that for you is getting power over to the garage. Right. I don't know what you're looking to power up in the garage. I would assume just some lights and a few outlets. And I have a really welder and a plasma cutter. I do stuff like that. But I don't, everything nowadays is, doesn't really draw that much current. A 100 well, amp would be... Plasma cutters draw quite a bit of amp, amperage. We'll just say service drop to the garage from the meter can as short as possible. Say that we put a pole out there at the road. Right. At the corner of the road. We feed both services off of it. Right. Um, and we still do run a lift pole in here. You would have to put a gate on this side. Okay. For that us gate wouldn't work? Um, you know, on my other gate? I would prefer that you would put one dedicated just for this. For access because... Okay. I don't want them driving all over here to oh, get to a lift pole. I see pole what you're saying. Here. Yeah. You know, hopefully they never have to come on the property, but we'll put a stake here. It's not really going to do any good. Right. Because they haven't joined the two together. They're still going to move some stuff around. This one is the fixed one and that one is going to come over to here. Right. So I'll put it on on this corner. I, if it could go this way, that'd be a lot better for me, I guess. Right. <laughs> You, I don't know honestly, how close you, you can be to a roof. You know, like you got to be a certain distance off the roof and all that. Um, not typically. I mean, normally we don't like to have it to where they can reach out if they're on the roof. That's why I say three or four feet off the end of the mobile. Right. I mean, most people aren't going to be on the roof. Yeah. But then if I do put a porch off here, then it would be a problem. Right. Right. Like I said, from a cost-effective standpoint for us, if it was on that end, it would make a whole lot more sense. But right. then again, that's going to cause you to possibly reconfigure where you're going to put the garage or whatever. I mean, over here, that's a long drop from over there, especially... Yeah, I'd have to use some pretty heavy wire. I don't know how much you're going to end up using amperage-wise for the house itself. I'm sure you're, it's a 200-amp service. Yeah. So that's going to dictate too, you know, if, if it was to the point where you needed another dedicated service. Right. Just for the garage. Right. A lot of people lately have been, when I say lately, within the past few years, been putting a 400 amp service in. Right. And splitting two and two. But. What the heck's using all the power? It's my understanding that it's <laughs> extremely difficult to locate a 400 amp service can. Oh, okay. And when you do, you're paying through the roof. So we may have to end up doing an easement on this piece because anytime we build primary, which, like I said, is the two wires out at the road, anytime we build that into a, usually into a property, right? We require an easement. You're not going to have anything funky with this as far as like a on-demand water heater. No, or, no. Those use incredible. Oh, I know. Amp pull amp yeah, range. I've I mean, seen. Yeah, a hundred amp, two hundred amp on the, the big down, ones. Right. Yeah. When they do that. So. No, I don't actually think they're worth it. If you have hard water, it's the electric ones aren't. No. Actually, I would if I was to get a on-demand water heater, instant water heater, it would be gas. Gas. Yeah. For sure. You still got to keep the elements clean. Yeah. Otherwise, they just scale over and they don't work worth it. And they, they're so hot that they scale over fast. Right. Yeah. So yours is the only service. Oh, okay. Off good. I could probably slack span from here to here. Right. Take and remove that pole. Put a forty. Um, put a 40 on that one, put the light back up, hang the transformer on that, and do away with this wire, 40 foot pole like out there. Okay. So come in, put the transformer on here, just have just your service, and then feed that direction for the other one. You got plans to get rid of this? No. It would be a shorter run, but then I got to worry about having access to that lift pole from this direction. If the lift pole ever went bad and we had to get in here to change the lift pole out, I got to run it by my supervisor, make sure it's okay to give them a clear, concise, right. you know. I'm trying to make everybody happy. Right. You know well, I understand, yeah. The The farthest we could go is, is like 130 on a slack span. Okay. So I could come 130 feet over from that pole and come straight in. I'll put a stake on this side for now, since this is this side's the That's, fixed side. It's not moving. Right. Then uh, I'll get you to sign 
a waiver form for us anytime before we do work on the property. Just simply stating to the best of your knowledge anywhere we're, where we're, we are going to be performing work. There's nothing underground. Correct. All right. And if there is and we run into it, we're not responsible at that point. I don't know what would be under here. Unless they run into Jimmy Hoffer. I was just going to say, unless there's a dead body or something. <laughs> well, if it's Jimmy Hoffa, I could probably make a lot of money if you find him. <laughs> you know, no facilities, no water lines, septic system, driveways, sprinklers. So all I need you to do is date, sign, and print for me, if you would. We are a little bit behind. We're a little short-staffed. Um, something like this, like two weeks. Oh, that's, but but yeah. you're still quite a ways out, I mean, between the wells. And oh, I know. Else, I mean, right. We could have it done in two weeks. Uh, right away, cruiser out in front of everything first so right. and they're they're on schedule so it's not like they're backed up okay so they're doing well it's just we're short staffed with uh journeyman linemen so thank you thank you i like this coming in this way as far as you having your garage over here and stuff it would keep your your dedicated service out of the meter can go into the garage shorter which right is benefit you so all right i appreciate it no problem thank nice you. Meeting you yep nice meeting you have a great day you too well that was a nice guy easy to work with definitely rather have it come through here than have him mow down a bunch of stuff over there we're clearing getting underground service There's a wasp or a hornet's nest in this dead tree. I keep seeing them flying in and out. Oh yeah. That's gonna be fun when I drop that one. <laughs> Probably won't be able to move it for a bit. I ain't playing with that. Huh. I don't see anything coming out. Well, there was a bunch of them. I gotta see how this gets done. I just can't imagine how they're gonna move that thing. Yeah, it's still dusty. Big metal plates. Guess I should have took that other tree right there out, huh? How's it going? Good. Good. Okay, will this be out of your way in that back corner? Anywhere in there, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Anywhere. <it doesn't. clears throat> Alright, I'm getting it done. When the guy graded out with the dozer, he knocked off the flags for the septic in my well. Guess I'll have to put some stakes where they were. I gotta see how you guys do that. That's got to be something. What do you put it on tracks and, and then slide them together? Yeah, they set one like this side, and then they'll got to put it on rollers and come along. Oh, it's on rollers yeah. on like a track. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's for something that much weight, it has yeah. to. <laughs> Bump my arm. Oh wow. It don't take much anymore. You want a band aid or a no, patch or something? I just scrape it again somewhere else. Now, one thing I'm curious of is how they connect the electric from one side to the other because the main breaker panel is on this side. Now Wes was over here yesterday and he said, oh there it is, it says it right on it. He said there's a spot that they pull over from one side to the other. Oh, that's my door to the bathroom. My other question is how they connect the air conditioning ducts in Florida, we use the outside units that sit on the ground for central air with a heat element or a heat pump. Typically, it's run in with flexible ducts. And so I bet you they just pump them in from underneath, and put a big Y and feed each side because motor riders' parents got a new double wide and that has heat and central air and that's inside the house. And he said when they joined together, there's a spot where the two ducks went together and it wasn't a good seal and they sprayed spray foam. 
and he says it seems like it only really filled the bottom so it could escape out of the top you think they put a big rubber seal or foam seal on each side so when they smash together it would make a good seal so I guess that wouldn't be a problem down here because they use flex duct it's a pretty good size double wide it's 1670 square feet roughly you probably need like what a three ton unit so it's probably it's probably be a 14 inch I don't know much about the stuff they use down here in Florida now one thing I did notice and I'm making my list and I have to correct my last video where I said it was three months. It's actually two and a half months. It's 45 days that you can make your list to turn in and then they'll come and fix everything that needs to be repaired. I was looking at this and it looks like my sliding door is off, right? And I look up top and my vinyl siding's buckled right there. I was thinking whoever put this this is the floor it's that much over here it's that much they put the strip on wrong underneath you start with the bottom course that whole section all has to come off I mean it might even have to go all the way back to there actually what they did it's good to hear all right <laughs> it's actually from here to the end the overhang is this much all the way up underneath that door and then it starts graduating right here Okay, and then what they probably did was go back up. No, it's still. Yeah, it's going back up, see? That's under the window. Yeah, look at that. Then it goes right back to where it started. So that means they got to take from the end of there to the end of that door and this that whole end has to drop you can definitely see where it comes all the way across and then just before that sliding door it drops down an inch so whoever measured this starting strip y'all screwed up they're gonna have to replace this because there's not enough there and that's why there's such a big buckle right there I've never seen a box like that. This has to be fixed too because it, it's going to drive me crazy. Not only did they have this off to the left, this is a little off to the right. But it all, it's all held by these so just got to pull them out, line that up, line this up. But it's aesthetics. Another thing Wes saw yesterday in the bathroom down here is a zipper. That must be for the plumbing. Oh, that's another thing that has to be connected. That bathroom. There's a pipe over there. And there's another zipper. Huh. Pretty neat. Yeah, that's some weight there, boys. I think my Jeep will tow it. I don't think so. Yeah, two by four interior walls too, boys. I'm curious what kind of sheathing, because believe it or not, the cheaper trailers, the cheaper mobile homes, manufactured homes, this is a piece of, I believe it's five eighths, at least half inch, that they put on the end walls, you know, the front and the back. But, they do not put it behind this if you get the cheaper ones so they'll actually just put vinyl siding right over the side the walls after there's like a wrap this there's supposed to be sheathing on this 
Yep, it's got the sheathing. Yeah, so whoever put this starter strip screwed up this whole side. There's my drawers. Hope it wasn't built on a Friday. Then it'll be a lot more issues. Alright, so that's fresh water connection. <laughs> so those zipper openings must be for accessing the toilet and all that stuff in the bathrooms. But how do you connect the two together? The drains that go to the septic, they all hang low, but these, I thought they stayed up in the insulation. We will see. I gotta see how this is done. Process done. Really? You guys are quick, huh? Morning. Pants. We roll it on. What's each one of these weigh? You about eighteen thousand pounds or something? Oh, more than that. Are they? Yeah. Thirty thousand, forty thousand pounds. Wow. I think they're ten thousand pound axles. I think I could be wrong. Yeah, you're probably right. Morning. Morning. Yeah, they're getting there. Oh, they got the axles off already? Wow. You guys don't play around, huh? You got the axles off already? It's going to be high and dry. Oh, she's wavy. Bet that's it, where the axles are because all the weight is all right in that point. Yeah. Out of six. Crew of six. Hey. Yeah, I got a YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. Just basically show the process. Yeah. We'll make you famous. Or I might make you famous. <laughs> yeah, that'd make good video on YouTube. <laughs> oh, I see. They they've got a seal around this whole thing, too. Well, you can see the weight where the axles are. Moving right along. Oh, you're Andrew. Oh, you're the you're the Bay Area. Guy. Oh, okay, okay. He's bringing his uh his loader down too, and he says if you want to spread it and pull the stuff in, he'll just keep going with loads of that stone. Oh, so he'll keep running it back, and then he's got the Rural King tractor. I almost got one of those, except that was going to cost a whole lot more money, even without the cab. old governor trick. Pretty big process. 
Darn it, I missed it. Hopefully the time lapse is still working. Oh, it's still going. Wow. You guys don't play around, huh? Done it a couple hours. Yeah, I went to straighten the road out. Me and one of the neighbors with the tractor filling some of them holes in. That's bad. Yeah, that's right there, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll spend an hour out here. They won't be. And I was like, damn it. I missed them putting it together. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's supposed to be a hot one today. We need some rain. Some rain Desperately. Certainly help us. Looking good. Yeah, yeah, we're almost there. The old chain come along. That's pretty wild. Wonder how they keep the top together. Guess they took it all. Yep, I was gonna take two stakes. Oh well. <laughs> they got electric brakes too, they had to disconnect. Coming together. Well, it's all together. Guess that's how it's done. Well, look at that. It's got side braces too now. Or struts. Big bathroom. Not too neat of work, but it'll work. Wait for the next step, which is probably siding, right? Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoShees.com. Thanks for watching.